Lads, 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 g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, the day after what was a fantastic grand final. I am a little bit worse for wear, I wish it was because I had been out drinking and having a good time, but instead stayed up late editing the vlog, which is now out on the channel, you would have uh, possibly seen that somewhere. Finished editing, did the thumbnail, crawled into bed at around 2.36am, and I got a call from Caden McDonald. Now, in any other circumstance, probably wouldn't have taken that call, but when Caden McDonald's just won a flag, there's no way you don't take that call. So that was awesome. Had a good chat with him, spoke for about an hour and a half, and went to bed about 4.30 by my estimation. So, oh, I hate my life right now. I'm an old man, I'm too old for this. But a big thank you to everyone who, uh, well, generally has supported the channel lately, but also jumped on, on the True Footy live stream for Grand Final Day. It was a massive amount of fun. Always my favorite day of the year. Really appreciate you guys dipping in and even a few donations as well, which I really, really appreciate. And I want to shout out Logan Horton in particular, donated $80 to the channel as well. So thank you so much, Logan. You've been around for ages and uh, far too kind. So I just wanted to give you a particular shout out. It was a really good grand final. Uh, 74 points won't sort of indicate how good that game was. People, you know, in the future will be looking back on 2021 and think, oh, that was a bit of a stinker. That must have been shit to watch, but it couldn't have been further from the truth. It was a seesawing contest. You generally didn't know who was going to win up until about three quarter time. At one point, it genuinely looked like the dogs had the demons measure and they were going to become premiers. But I think the exciting thing was just the nature Melbourne tore them apart. We saw this team sort of come out of their shell and demonstrate that they are the best team in the competition by annihilating the Bulldogs. I think it was 100 points to seven from the 12 minute mark of the third quarter or something silly like that. In today's video, I'm just going to highlight five things that I took away from what was a really enjoyable grand final. If you want a more detailed review, I think we're going to do that on the Drew Footy Show as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll probably be out tomorrow. The first takeaway I want to discuss is Christian Petrarca and the fact that that was pretty much the best Norm Smith medal performance I've ever seen. The best performance in a grand final I've ever seen. Ended up equaling the record with Simon Black for most possessions in a game with 39. It was originally 40, but I think they sort of go back after the games and look at the stats again and they sort of correct any little mistakes. So that was a bit strange. He broke the record, but now equals it with 39. 18 in the first half, who was prominent, but it was the second half where he had 21, where he really, really lifted a notch. He did open the scoring, which was fantastic for me. I put $5 on him at $14 odds uh, to be first goal scorer, so he won me 70 bucks. So I was up and about, and uh, the way he really lifted when Melbourne needed him was the most inspiring part of that performance. The D's almost almost looked down and out in that third term and when they were trailing by 13 points he won a center clearance that led to the Bailey Fritch goal then he won the next clearance from the center and that ended up in the Ben Brown goal then of course there was that ripping goal he kicked himself which was incredible deep in the pocket like I said it was an unreal performance equaled the record and had something like 900 meters gain to go with his two goals insane he also had nine clearances 24 of his possessions were contested and 15 score involvements that is insane with 11 inside 50s as well so he kicked two goals he had two goal assists he was everywhere and was the match winner now i've been saying for a while i think bontempelli is the best player in the competition and he had a very good grand final in most uh, respects with three goals and 25 posies but a lot of people say it's the big performances in big games big grand finals that define you and petrarca has just outdone dusty martin in last year's decider so i'm not making any big calls as to whether now he's the best player in the the game but gee it makes you think the second learning from this is maybe not a learning because i think i've been consistent on this all year but perhaps reaffirm the belief that the demons are simply on their own level and they demonstrated that by blowing this game apart in about 30 seconds of madness at the 12 minute mark of the game the bulldogs led by 19 points they had the game in their grasp i think we were saying on the stream one more goal and it felt like melbourne were out which probably wasn't true in hindsight but it did genuinely feel that way but the Demons are the best third quarter side in the competition. They banged home seven goals in the next 16 minutes of play. And that's insane. They kicked three goals in the final 50 seconds of the quarter. And it went from Melbourne almost looking out to it being very difficult to see them not winning the game in the space of that 16 minutes. Beverage reaction kind of sums it up really well. He says, to think we were 19 points down during that third quarter and for the scoreline to end up what it was, it was a considerable show of power and strength out of the middle. We couldn't stem the tide. We couldn't get a clearance and get it into our half. And that really just speaks to the dominance that the Melbourne Demons had in that burst of play. Petrarca and Oliver in particular, just winning clearance after clearance. I think Viney had his fair share of clearances up there with most on ground, in fact. The Ds notched their 13th flag. It was their first since 1964, which you should all know by now, but it was their biggest winning margin in a grand final and its second highest score in a grand final as well. Kicking 16 goals in a half is enormous and they ended up on 140 points, which is the highest score in a grand final since Geelong in 
2007. Bailey Fritch has had an amazing year. He kicked six, was unlucky not to win the Norm Smith medal. I mean, I definitely think it should have gone to Petrarca, but when you kick six, and in fact, he's the first player since Darren Jarman in 1997 to kick six, you're always a little bit stiff when you don't get a Norm Smith medal for that. But it was an incredible performance by so many Demons players. The third takeaway from this game for me is probably the fact that we really don't need to feel bad for Adam Trelaw anymore. I think he is in a really good spot. As you recall, at the end of the 2020 season, rumors started to circulate. He was going to leave Collingwood willingly uh, to go to Queensland to be with his partner. And it turns out it was actually Collingwood that were maybe driving a trade out of the club. Trelaw came out and said he didn't want to trade. He still had five years left on his contract and for sort of mental health reasons he cited he needed to be closer to Victoria. In the end he got traded the dogs for what I would say is kind of peanuts for a player of his caliber. It was pick 14 and a future second for Trelaw 26, 33 and 42. So more or less it was roughly a second round pick they got for a player like Adam Trelaw. The reason I'm saying you don't need to feel bad for him is look where Collingwood are now and maybe they made the right move for their list. I don't, I'm not particularly supportive of the way they handle that situation but Adam Trelaw just played in the grand final and even though nobody was realistically considering him a Norm Smith chance because, you know, there were so many players that played well, but he had three goals and 27 possessions and really did his best to lift his side in that grand final. To be honest, I think with the Bulldogs, the way they're set up at the moment, you'd way rather be at the Bulldogs than you would at Collingwood. On a similar note, Ben Brown is a player that was pushed out of North Melbourne. And I thought perhaps uh, it wasn't a great move from North perspective, but it's ended up being a masterstroke for Ben Brown in terms of his career. I thought it was a strange one uh, to trade out Ben Brown when in 2017, 18 and 19, he finished third, second and second in the Coleman medal. He kicked to combine 188 goals across 66 games, which was more than any other key forward in the comp. And while North obviously have a new strategy of, you know, going for youth at the moment, they traded him for more or less pick 33 when you do all the algebra on that. And I'm sure some North fans out there will say um, they'd rather have the draft pick. But if you're going to trade a player who's, you know, statistically elite, at least do it when he's worth something, not when he's worth, you know, pick 33. Anyway, the point isn't to rag on North. It's more just that it's a Incredible to see that Ben Brown was pushed out of the bottom place club. He wasn't particularly valued. He goes straight to Melbourne and they win the flag in his first year. So he's a lucky man and he's going to have some competition with Sam Wiedemann signing on for another couple of years, but I'm sure he'll say it was all worth it. He's already got a premiership medallion. And the final short point I'll make out of this grand final is a point that I touched on in my grand final day preview. And it's the idea that equalization really is having a great effect on the league. The last four premiership sides have been Richmond, the Bulldogs, West coast and now melbourne and they're all teams that have had to rebuild through the draft process richmond the bulldogs and melbourne in particular were quite unsuccessful sides i include west coast in that because of the way that club sort of fell to its knees after the whole ben cousins and judd saga they were a pathetic team and and rebuilt through these measures and the main takeaway from that is i think that's the beautiful thing about our league if you go for any team in the league if you go for any team in the league you can hold a realistic belief that this can all turn around look where melbourne were 10 years ago even richmond just seven years prior to that 2017 flag were the worst team in the competition. And I like that it's not completely equalized. I I do like that there's teams that will have, you know, the best processes. And if there's slightly more resource, they'll generally do better. I like the little quirks of that, but... If Melbourne can come from where they did, when Paul Roos was asked to take over for a couple of years and hand over to Simon Goodwin, then you can believe some of the least successful teams in the competition right now can certainly do the same thing in the next five to eight years. And that's great. And I use the English Premier League example. If you go for Everton your entire life, the chances of you ever winning the Premier League, aside from like a Leicester City event in 2016, the same level of hope is not realistic. So it's a wonderful result for the league and a very inspiring example to us all. Anyway, guys, that is my five takeaways from this AFL Grand Final. It's been a terrific season. I'm kind of a little bit gutted that the season's over, but obviously there's still, you know, a whole new season's beginning with the draft and trade period as well, which I'm looking forward to covering. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself now. I need to get some sleep, to be honest. I'm still wearing the shirt from yesterday. Like, I'm a mess. This is a joke. But as always, guys, really appreciate your support. I'll see you throughout the week. We're still going to be making content. I'm going to be doing the Drew Footy Show. And God knows what videos I'm going to come up with this week. But hope to see you there. Hope you enjoy the video. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.